Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the great city of Pompano Beach. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> this is an honor for us. I want to honor you and, and, and thank you for being part of our city, but most importantly for taking your time out of your schedule to be able to learn about doing business in the Dominican Republic. And we have folks from the state, we have folks from uh, Broward County, we have folks from the city of Pompano Beach. So I hope you learn, I hope you uh, are able to eventually make it to the DR to be a part of their program, part of their export and trade. My understanding, Ms. Diaz, uh, she's amazing. I don't know where she at. She's right here. She's going to be our speaker today. And I understand that they actually will kind of hold your hand and walk you all the way through the process, even maybe take you down to the DR and introduce you to all those wonderful folks down there. So we're excited that you're here. I wish each and every one of you best of luck, best of success at the end of the day. If there's anything I can do throughout the day, please just give my office a call and we'll be happy to assist you. God bless you. Wow, okay, so now we're ready to really get into it and learn about the Dominican Republic. This is a major trading partner for Broward County, for South Florida, and we're very honored to have here from the U.S. Embassy in the Dominican Republic, Ms. Gila Diaz. But before she will be introduced, I will introduce to you our partner, Enterprise Florida. So who has heard of Enterprise Florida before? Oh, okay, most of you. So I, we always make this joke, it's not the rental car company, but uh, <laughs> Enterprise Florida is actually the economic development organization, the official one for the state of Florida. And they are here to help you get your exports out, if there's new businesses coming to the state. They have so many great resources and grant programs that you all should know about and spread the word to the community. But without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Mr. John Diaz, who's with Enterprise Florida, and he's gonna introduce our speaker and tell you all about the great programs. Let's give him a round of applause. John Deere with Enterprise Florida. For those of you who do not know about us, we're the official economic development organization of the state of Florida. We're here to help you export, that's what we do, your product and services, okay? I'll come back later on to tell you about our program and services and our trade grants. But I'm here now to introduce our speakers for today, Ms. Sheila Diaz. She came from private industry, worked for Cedar Bank, working for Horizons, for many years, and she joined the commercial, U.S. Commercial Service in the DR for some 21, 22 years already. She really knows the market. She knows a lot about the market and uh, the best way for you to really capture the export opportunity to, to, the, uh, to the country. So please help me welcome Ms. Diaz, please. Diaz de Andujar, to be used in Latin America. I'm a senior commercial specialist for the U.S. Commercial Service. I've been doing this for 21 years. I really enjoy my job, and here's my joke. I started doing this just right after elementary school. So you can calculate my age. <laughs> so I want this to be something, um, not just a presentation. If while I'm talking, you have a question, um, or suggestion or comment, please feel free to do so. I want this to be a more presentation. So let's get into business, going into the Dominican Republic and the Caribbean. So let's get oriented. 
I'll talk about a little bit more about the Caribbean in a few minutes, but I want you to take a look to the map. Our office in the Dominican Republic in Santo Domingo does not only cover the Dominican Republic, but the Caribbean region. If you notice the red dots over there, we have offices and partnership posts in the U.S. embassies located in those countries where we can help your company to do business. Take a look, please. It's Jamaica, Bahamas, Haiti, Barbados, and Trinidad and Tobago. We are not able to provide the same type of service as we do in Santo Domingo, where we have a fairly large staff, but we can help you to locate potential business partners, uh, know about the climate, the political environment, etc. The Caribbean, beyond a vacation destination. Usually the Caribbean is seen uh, unknown by its uh, very pristine beaches and white sands, but we are more than that. <coughs> Please take a look to the numbers. The Caribbean region has 26 markets, 43 million people, fairly large. And the U.S. market share is over 38%. The Caribbean countries imported just in 2017 close to 23 billion from the United States. That's, that's a big amount of money. It's, com it's much more than countries like Chile, Italy, Russia, and similar to large markets such as India, Australia, and very close to Brazil. The proximity of the Caribbean region to the United States it's one of the reasons why we always recommend to think about this region and keep in mind that it's much more than a vacation destination. A little breakdown on the numbers so you can take a look. The Bahamas, 3.1 billion imported from the United States. Dominican Republic, their largest market, 7.8 billion. Bahamas, I mean Barbados, 725 million. <coughs> Haiti, 1.4 billion, Trinidad and Tobago, 1.8, Jamaica, 2.1 billion. So you can be part of that. We usually refer to the Caribbean as the third border of America, and I think to Florida it's even a more accurate um, expression. We're just right there. There are flights every day out of any of the Florida city to the region. <coughs> so let's think about the advantages. I already mentioned the proximity. Also something really important is the affinity to the US brands. You can find them anywhere, not only for consumer goods, but also machinery, ICT, telecommunication, computers and peripheral, medical equipment, etc. We will see that in, in two more details later. Also, um, the language, it's not such a big barrier. They're generally English-speaking countries in the Caribbean, with some exceptions, like Dominican Republic, where the official language is Spanish. However, in the business uh, community, you can find people that are quite fluent in English as well. And the purchasing power, the numbers show that. We're talking about $23 billion. However, like in every equation, there are challenges. Small market sizes, geographically dispersed, logistical challenges, and new duty. And I want to stop that and mention, for example, um, that getting to one market to the other, it might be difficult in some cases because there are not direct flights among all of the islands. Uh, in the case of you based here in Florida, that's not a problem. In many cases, companies out of Dominican Republic being the largest market, you can handle the rest of the Caribbean region. Uh, but also, for example, Trinidad or Barbados, it's able to cover all some of the smaller islands. Again, I would like to emphasize the idea of you taking in consideration the Caribbean region to be part of your international strategy in expanding the market. Now I would like to uh, briefly go market by market. I don't want to go into a lot of details, uh, but I just want you to take a look to we call the highlights of each of the markets that I'm talking about. Bahamas, GDP a billion, GDP 
growth 1%, per capita income $22,000, bilateral trade $3.744 billion, imports from the United States $3 billion, U.S. imports market share 84%, that's quite significant. The Bahamas have a very stable environment, no political um, issues. The economy is strong. There's parity, almost parity on the uh, Bahamian dollar, one to one. However, uh, there are some challenges like the high utility cost and the high cost of living. I've been there quite a few times. And for example, the, brand, <coughs> the price of the real estate is really high, but still, uh, it's really low uh, ranking and ease on doing business, and it has low levels of productivity that, in a sense, is a good advantage for U.S. companies since they have to import most everything, all their um, equipment, etc. Any questions, Obama? No. So Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. I um, want to mention that the Eastern Caribbean, that it's covered out of Barbados, like I mentioned before. We have Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados itself, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the ne and Nevis, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and St. Kitts and Nevis, I'm sorry. Barbados, and as, the same as the other islands, enjoys also a very stable political environment, no big issues. There is a uh, opportunity in the hotel and restaurant equipment that's their major industry. Everything related to either construction, hotels, and restaurants, it's a good business opportunity for you. Um, they enjoy a really high rate of internet. They're really well connected with state-of-the-art uh, infrastructure. Um, there are new opportunities in the telecom industries, as I mentioned before, uh, also, the renewable energy, solar, which is you know something uh, that we have a lot here in Florida, so think about that as well. And um, like I mentioned before, construction and engineering. It's very common that for the construction of hotels and restaurants, they would use either U.S. companies or, in the case of Dominican companies, that partner with U.S. companies to do the large developments in the hotels and housing as well. I don't know if we have a lot of people from construction here, but take that in consideration, especially after aftermath of the uh, hurricanes, we're in the hurricane path, so there's a lot of needs for construction and building products around there. We have here my recently appointed commercial officer, Andrew, is going to be covered the Caribbean region out of our office in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, he'll be working with us. That's Andrew over there. And Andrew, one of the things he'll be working is on the infrastructure development and um, construction sector. So later we can share you contact information. <coughs> Haiti, population 10 million, GDP 74. $7.4 billion, income per capita, 820. The U.S. represents 23% of the total imports for Haiti. Uh, there are three major ships and port facilities that have been renewed lately. The telecommunication sector is growing quite a bit. There are a lot of opportunities in agribusiness, in packaging seats, and machinery. Haiti just recently completed the renovation of its Cape uh, Mission <coughs> Airport and receives daily flights from Miami. And there are, you know, uh, a tremendous connectivity with the United States. Jamaica, 2.7, GDP 14 billion. Bilateral trade is quite significant. U.S. market share, 40%. There are a lot of opportunities in energy, in, in renewable, and in LNG, tourism, you know, it's one of the pillars of their economy. Um, take a look, tourism and remittances of the Jamaican um, diaspora, and even in the United States, represents $2 billion in their economy per year. Trinidad and Tobago, the numbers, the GDP grows <coughs> negative, 
the country is in a recession currently. Uh, that's basically because of the falling energy prices and the production that started in 2015. And unfortunately, that recession is expected to go through 2018 as well. They're trying to, to work that out, so we'll see if uh, the Trinidad and Tobago is able to recover from that. Still, opportunities are there. Um, information and communication technologies are still in demand. Um, the energy and exploration equipment, because that's their major um, pillar of the economy. So even though they're in a recession, you might take a look to Trinidad because that's what's going to happen eventually, probably for 2019, as their economy is predicted. So now we finished with the Caribbean region. <coughs> is there any question of the countries that we just talked about? No. So let's go to the main reason why we're here. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Could you tell us of, of the safety in Haiti? There. Well, I can share with you there is a travel advisory and state.gov. Um, currently, my understanding is that the State Department uh, is advising not to travel, but I'm not in the uh, capability of giving you more information. I can share with you the, the link that the State Department provides. But if you Google it, like uh, traveling State Department, we will give you all the information. So let's, why the Dominican Republic? Scale of economy and positive growth. Capta DR is a Central America, Dominican Republic and United States free trade agreement. Proximity to the US, the flight from Santo Domingo or Punta Cana to Miami is only one hour and 45 minutes. Affinity, I would say incredible affinity with US products and brands. You can find in the Dominican Republic most of the big franchises that are US, Burger King, McDonald's, Kentucky, you name it, Apple, Applebee's, DJ Friday, Outback, you name it, and probably in, in San Francisco. And an influence of the Dominican diaspora, uh, the last calculation says there are over no 1.8, but 2 million of Dominicans living in the United States. And that creates an incredible uh, connection. Most of them live in the north part of the United States, New York, and of course here in Florida. However, we've been seeing that many Dominicans are moving towards other non-traditional states like North Carolina, South Carolina. So I would say, me as a Dominican said, third Dominican. Anywhere. <laughs> Some highlights <clears throat> Independence, February 27, 1844. The capital is Santo Domingo. The second largest city of the Dominican Republic is Santiago de los Caballeros, another Santiago. It's located in the central part of the island, very vibrant and uh, fairly economic developed. A city with a lot of maquilas and digital and manufacturing. The government type is representative democracy, democracy, no issues, and the political is quite stable. The president is Danilo Medina, uh, that his second term started on August 16, 2016, and it is expected to go through 2020. The predominant poli political party is the PLD. Many people know <coughs> Fernandez, former president of the Dominican Republic that is quite active here in Florida. Uh, the PLD dominates both chambers, the senators and the deputies or the two uh, legislation. We mentioned before, Spanish is the official language. The Dominican Republic itself is the second largest economy not only in the Caribbean, but Central America. It's a, good, it's a good rank. Second largest. Currently operating nine airports <coughs> and 12 seaports. <coughs> Let's look quickly, we are by numbers. Population, 10.6 million, million people. The predominant religion is Catholic. It's a very young, 
population. 47 of them are under 25. Wow. Yeah, I am among those. <laughs> <laughs> you did the calculation right about my age, so you see. <laughs> I'm right there. Mm -hmm. Go, girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, we have um, 32 below poverty line. Um, we know that the government has been working quite hard on that, but still, that's a reality, and we face it every day. The economy is 71.65 billion. The unemployment is at 30, 13%. However, it's an economy that has been growing. Last year grew 4.6%. It's quite a good GDP and purchasing power. You will see by the numbers. It's a lot of imports, a lot of, um, not only from the United States, the economy has five pillars, and that reflects on the opportunities that you have in the Dominican Republic to do business. Number one is tourism. Tourism, the Dominican Republic is the number one Caribbean destination. It has over 70,000 rooms available. Mm -hmm. You know, the Republica de Punta Cana, as we mentioned, because many people think it's a separate country. <laughs> it's amongst the top 10 worldwide vacation destinations. So mm -hmm. there are hotels just one by mm -hmm. a few dollars. So if you're in that area, think about it. Everything for construction, restaurant, food, everything. The second pillar is the free trade zone. Many people will know them as Kila. It's where you have companies that will bring into the Dominican Republic raw material. And that raw material is not necessarily something you can touch. It could be a phone call, because call centers, they're growing incredibly. So probably if you call one of the airlines, you think you're talking to somebody here, and it's just in the Dominican Republic. Hmm. Telemedicine is growing incredibly, and support for many uh, computers and, and ICT companies. So uh, that's something to take into consideration as well. Out of the 500 and plus companies operating in the Maquilas, 36% uh, of them are in US, meaning 230 firms are from the United States, or you have companies that are manufacturing for the United States. For the gentlemen, um, this is like, well, it's not a joke, actually, it's true. If you were paint brands, for example, there is a very, very good chance that it's assembled in the Dominican Republic. Over 80% of the Haynes brand underwear is manufactured in the Dominican Republic. Mm. Currently, it's the largest employer. They have over six uh, manufacturing plants in the Dominican Republic. Also, Johnson & Johnson. They, they're incredibly, all of their um, toiletries, many of their toiletries are assembled in the Dominican Republic. And I can go on with the list, your Timberland shoes, and Taylor, London Fog. Maybe you take a look to your, your the back of your um, clothing and you will see that it says assembly in the Dominican Republic. That generates um, a lot of income also as well for the country. Remittances, um, US remittances is 70%. Remember, we mentioned that there are over 2 million of Dominicans living in the United States. Um, the mining, mining sector is uh, dominated entirely, entirely by barrack gold. It's not like the usual gold mine, it's sulfide, but uh, it, it, become, it became probably five years ago like the number one uh, mining company, and they're doing pretty, pretty, pretty. And last but not least, agriculture. Uh, agriculture to the United States and Europe as well, especially with the organic um, influence now, cocoa, coffee. And in cocoa, I want to mention that Belgian chocolate is made at least 50% with Dominican cocoa. Mm -hmm. Coffee, sugar, fruits, vegetables, flowers, but 
But again, mostly to the United States, accounting 70% out of the almost $400 million that the Dominican experts on the agricultural um, side. Any questions on the numbers? Yes, sir. because you know the better your exchange rate uh, benefits, but it's quite stable. It grows like from 0.1 to per month. Does that answer your question? Well, not really. I was actually just trying to, because I've never been to Do the, uh, 50 pesos is equivalent to a dollar. One dollar, like one US dollar. dollar. Yeah, like, so when it's 50 pesos know, per dollar? Say that again, sir? Like 50 pesos in comparison to one dollar. Uh -huh. So does that mean like with 50 pesos, like you get like a soda or something like that? You know oh, maybe two sodas. Maybe, maybe yeah. two sodas. Yeah. Like if you buy a 20 ounces Coca-Cola, it'd be 25 pesos each one. A bottle of water, depending where you buy it, um, would be 10 pesos. If it, it's much cheaper than here. Yeah, I got it. Yes. Thank you. It is. It is not a cheap country, but you know, in some cases, it's fairly. <laughs> and um, yes, sir, I'll give you the uh, the money goes like we don't have coins like twenty cents or when we devaluated maybe fifteen years ago they change the currency. The type of coins from the smallest is five pesos, ten pesos, twenty five pesos. And then you go 50 pesos, that's paper money, and it goes to 2,000 pesos, being the uh, big one. Hmm. Sir? Yeah, you put up a figure of 22.9, I think it was, the- The Caribbean region? Yeah. Billions, uh -huh. Goods and services. Do you have a split between goods and services, and in services in the software? I can look for it. If you, my contact information will be at the end. Uh, we have the breakdown for Florida, but we can take a look. Yeah. But you want to split for the Caribbean region or just yeah, for the, the Caribbean? Of course, it will be a makeup of all the, all the countries. And the reason that I ask this question is a little bit polarizing what we do, but also to the fact that there are inefficiencies in these countries in terms of import and customs yeah. and hardware. And there's a lot to bring over from remote services or cloud-based software services. Uh -huh. That's why. Yeah. Sure, we can we can do that like later and yeah. I I'm not I'm sure you will not be able to find all the numbers, but we'll do our best in breaking it out for you. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Our our embassies around the world, um, in the cases of some of those items, we produce a report by the name Country Commercial Guide. It's compiled by my department, Department of Commerce, with inputs from different departments, including a executive summary that is usually done by the ambassadors. Country Commercial Guide is a really good, good document. And I'm sure if you Google it, Country Commercial Guide for Barbados or the country of your interest, that would be there. But just information. Okay. Somebody will, yeah. How's the healthcare industry? In the Dominican Republic? Yes. Yeah. We'll get into that is a best um, prospect, absolutely. Um, it is a mix of private and public. Uh, the public, there is a great need for services, uh, equipment, medical equipment, but a great need of money from the central government. But the opportunities are there. We always recommend our companies, US companies, to go with the private sector. Most of the Dominicans, it's certain possibility, economic possibilities would go to the private sector. Not cleaning, that you know, we have the latest and equipment. But if you need more detail, we can discuss it later. Yeah, but it's a best prospect. You'll see the numbers. Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, um, will we be touching upon cannabis legalization as a response to the health care issues? Say that, I, I think I don't will you be, I'm a cannabis attorney. Would you be um, touching upon cannabis legalization as a response to the health care concerns? Uh, no, uh, I, we can discuss it. It's nothing that it's even in the radar in the okay. Dominican Republic. measure housing but a I mean I, I don't know how to convert it we go by feet in the DR well, so like a small house a by I mean by meters uh, 90 meters square meters would be a free fast okay for affordable housing forty thousand dollars more or less we can talk about in detail but it's something that is growing and the government has plans of developing 20 thousand more units within the next couple of years. Okay. And we can talk <coughs> in, in, in the pricing for the food loans there. Say that again, ma'am? With the, with the food, um, pricing of the food. The food? Yeah. I mean, is it, is it comparable to the United States? No, it's cheaper than the United States. It's cheaper. Yes, ma'am. The homes that you just mentioned that they're going to be building homes, are they, are they for low-income people or are they just for them? Affordable housing. Affordable housing. Affordable housing, yes. Prefab mostly. Like buildings, yes. Yes. It is, it's one of the main issues and, and concerns for the government. Uh, that I mentioned before that 32% of Dominicans living uh, below the poverty line, mm -hmm. that's what they're trying to do to, to provide them with decent housing so they can um, feed that Unfortunate. Very quick, business environment. Um, speaks for itself. DR is the eighth largest economy in Latin America. United States and the DR trade relations. Americans live in the DR. That's, that's significant. 